get people to follow him. Those people are trying to get people to follow them. Say, come and follow me. Because they want the votes and they want to be Prime Minister or they want to be President. And you get people who are not in the realm of politics, in the realm of religion, who say, come and follow me. You know, you've got Gandhi who says, come and follow me. You've got Buddha who says, come and follow me. You've got Muhammad who says, come and follow me. And which one of these people is right? Because Jesus also said, come and follow me. Well, I'm going to tell you that all those other people I've mentioned, apart from Jesus, are not worthy of following. It's no good following any of those political people, not even any of those religious leaders. Now, you might say, well, how can you say that? How can you say it's not worthy of following Muhammad? Well, the reason I say that is because Muhammad says different things about Isa, Jesus, than what the Bible says. Now, if one, says, one, one book says one thing and another book says another, can they both be true? They can't be, can they? All right, so if the Quran says Isa is not God, and the Bible says that he is, one is telling the truth and one is not telling the truth. So how can I be so sure that the Bible is telling the truth about Jesus rather than the Quran? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Jesus is the whole fulfilment of the Old Testament. Now, I know that lots of other religions say, read the Bible. Gandhi said, read the Bible, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Muhammad says, read the Bible, there's a lot of good stuff in there. So I know that I'm already onto a winner here because all these other religions are told, oh yeah, read the Bible. Now some people reject the New Testament and say, do you know what? Yeah, the New Testament, that's the Christian stuff. But I'm okay with the Old Testament and that's what a lot of Muslims have said. Yeah, the Old Testament's fine. Well, I can prove to you today that Jesus is real from the Old Testament. Yeah? Now, I've shown it to a Muslim lady before. And she had her eyes open because she didn't realise how much of the Old Testament is pointing to Jesus. And I'm going to share one story with you. And that's the story of what happened with Moses, or Musa, you might know him as Musa, and the Ten Plagues. You had a Musa, young, young lady? No? Musa, Moses. Now, you know, he went to Pharaoh and he said, let the people go, let these lights go. And, Moses, uh, and Pharaoh said, no. And this went on and on and on and on until all these different plagues went past, until the tenth and final plague came past. And you know what the tenth and final plague was? It was the plague of the Passover. We've all heard about it, haven't we? They had to kill a male firstborn lamb and to put the blood on the doorposts. And then the end of death passed over. All those houses had the blood on the doorposts. They were saved by the blood of the lamb. Now, that is clearly pointing to Jesus. And yet all these other religions accept this. Muhammad, Muslims, will accept that story as being true. But they won't realise that, that that lamb was pointing to Jesus. How was that lamb pointing to Jesus? I'll tell you how it was same way that John the Baptist pointed to Jesus. What did John the Baptist say to Jesus? He pointed to him and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. When everybody heard that, he thought, Lamb of God, wait a minute, is this the Lamb, the better Lamb that we were promised? Because that, that Lamb that Moses killed, that all the Israelites killed, and put the blood on the doorpost that saved them from death, that had to be a male Lamb, a firstborn Lamb. That had to be a perfect Lamb. And that is exactly what Jesus was, he was male. He was the firstborn in his family. He was the firstborn of all creation, Paul tells us in Colossians. But he was also perfect. They couldn't pick a lamb that had stripes on it, spots on it, and, uh, and a limb. You had to pick a perfect lamb. Why? Because it pictures the perfect lamb of God, Jesus. He was perfect. He had done no things wrong. He'd never done anything wrong in his life. Even the Quran says, that, that Jesus is sinless. Now the Quran never, and Muslims never claim that Muhammad is sinless, but they claim Jesus is. And it says about Jesus, it says, Behold, he is that Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. You see, you can't get to heaven by following religion. You can't get to heaven by trying to be good, trying to do as good as you possibly can. Because you have to be perfect, because heaven is perfect. How can I get to heaven with my imperfections and my sin in me? I have to be made perfect on the inside. And that can happen through what Jesus did on the cross. So that's what makes him better. 
Not only is he a better man than any other religious leader that's ever walked this planet, not only was he perfect, unlike any other religious leader on this planet, he was absolutely perfect and he died for our sins. Now, how do I know that God accepted his sacrifice? I'll tell you how God accepted his sacrifice. He accepted his sacrifice because he raised him back from the dead. He raised him back from the dead. I don't know what's going on to the right of me, but I'm crossing a bit of a disturbance. But uh, somebody doesn't like what I'm saying, but somebody else likes what I'm saying, and it's caused a bit of an argument over there. So bless the sister, take this trespass job for sticking up for me. Because I've got the truth. I've got the truth. I am not the truth, but I have the truth. See, the truth is, the truth is that Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father up in heaven except through me. Now, is that something you'd like to know today? Because we don't know how long we've got left. I know how long I've got left at the car park. If I don't go back there in about 50 minutes time, I'm going to have to pay five. But I don't know how long we have here on planet Earth. And nobody does. So what I'm saying is get prepared for the end. Because we don't know how long's left. You know, we, we don't know how much time we've got left. You know, I, just, I could live for another 40 years. I could live for, like, 40 days. I could be gone in 40 hours. How, how long are you going to live for, madam? Do you know? Probably not that long. Why is that? You're making the wrong life choice at the minute. <laughs> but you know, it's like, we, we, we just don't know like, how long we've got left. So don't put these things off. Let's choose today to follow Jesus. Let's choose to follow God today because we do not know how long we have left. 